what is death? Can we define it? Is lack of life, isn't it? That is death. Is death the end of all? For many, especially for the Sadducees, there was no resurrection. And for many today, they say, when I die, that's the end of everything. But the Apostle Paul made it very clear in Hebrews 9.27 that it is commanded to man to die once. After that comes what? The judgment. I want to go through a few thoughts in the Bible about the origin, nature, and destiny of man. In Genesis 2.7, we read, Genesis 2.7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Man was taken out of the dust, formed by God, and in order that that statue of clay may become a living soul, God gave him something. What was it? The Bible says, the breath of life. Breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life. I want you to notice this word, breath. The Hebrew word for breath is ruach. And when man became a living soul, he was alive. He was not dead. He was not a, a um, dead clay. He was a living soul soul. In order that he maintain, may maintain life, he ought to eat from the tree of life that was in the middle of the paradise of God. And he did eat of the tree of life. And while he was eating that and was obedient to God, his life would perpetuate. But uh, we know the history of Adam's disobedience and how God pronounced upon him on the day that thou shalt eat of the forbidden tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is in the midst of the garden. Ye shall surely die. And the enemy came and said, Said what? In, in English, in the King James Version said, ye shall not surely die. But in other versions, it says, surely ye shall not die. That's what the enemy said. But in chapter 3 of Genesis, in verse 19, God pronounced a sentence upon the man. Genesis 3:19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Where would man go when he dies? The Bible says he goes to dust. And in Ecclesiastes, the 
chapter 12, verse 7. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth, as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. This word Spirit here is the same word in Hebrew like in Genesis 2-7, breath. This is the Spirit. The only thing that God gave man after he formed him was the breath of life. And in Ecclesiastes says, this ruach, or this spirit, or this breath. The word ruach can be translated in many different ways. Air, breath, uh, wind, spirit. And when man goes to the dust, his breath that God gave him goes out of him. And he is now unconscious. He is dead. Does he know anything? No. Ecclesiastes 3, 19 and 20. Ecclesiastes 3, 19 and 20. For that which befalleth the sons of men, befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath. So that a man has no preeminence above a beast. For all is vanity. All go unto one place. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. What is the difference between a man and an animal at death? What is the difference? Where do they go? Both of them. Go to the dust. And it says they both are dust. They go both to one place. Not to heaven, not to hell, not to limbo, not to the purgatory, but goes to the dust. In death, there is no difference between an animal and a man. But you know where is the difference? After death in the resurrection. From the time when uh, the sentence was pronounced upon Adam, thou shalt return to dust, death had dominion over man until the time of Moses. We read this in uh, Romans, Chapter 5, verse 12. Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And verse 14, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Did you notice Apostle Paul understood clearly that 
from Adam until Moses, there was no one resurrected. Death had complete rule over death. But with Moses, that was broken. And we read in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 4 and 5. Deuteronomy 34, uh, sorry, 5 and 6. 34, verse 5 and 6. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher until this day. Moses died, and the Bible says that he, God, buried. In Patriarchs and Prophets, um, we read on page 478, but he, Moses, was not long to remain in the tomb. Christ himself, with the angels who had buried Moses, came down from heaven to call forth the sleeping saint. Satan had exulted at his success in causing Moses to sin against God and thus come under the dominion of death. According to this statement here, occurred the first resurrection ever related in history. Moses was resurrected by Christ himself. And Satan was not happy. In the book of Jude, verse 9, Jude, verse 9, it says, Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. There was a dispute. Satan wanted to hold Moses in the grave. He died because he disobeyed God. And the Lord said, Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. You caused Moses to lose his patience and hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. But Moses was resurrected. Christ himself and the angels resurrected him. And when Jesus was on earth, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses was one that appeared to Christ on the mountain, Moses and Elijah. Elijah. Uh, this is recorded in uh, chapter 17 of Matthew. You can read verses 1 to 3. Uh, I'm not reading to save time because we want to go through uh, important points about the resurrections. <coughs> After the resurrection of Moses in the Old Testament, there were other resurrections. One is recorded in 1 Kings chapter 17. If you want to take note, 1 Kings 17, verse 18 to 22. And that was the, woman, the son of the woman from Zarephath that Elijah prayed to the Lord after the boy was dead and he was resurrected. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 32 to 36, we read about another resurrection, and that was the son of the Shunammite, a woman from Shunem. And 
that boy was also dead. And Elisha prayed to the Lord, and the boy was resurrected. This is in 2 Kings 4, 32 to 36. And there was another interesting resurrection mentioned in chapter 13, 2 Kings 13, verse 21. Let's read this verse. And it came to pass, 2 Kings 13, 21. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Another resurrection, another person, just touched the bones of Elisha, the prophet, and he revived. In the New Testament, before the resurrection of Jesus, there were also resurrections mentioned. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verses 49 to 55. Let us read. Luke 8, 49 to 55. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. You know who was he? Jairus, Jairus. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and he shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed to him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straight away, and he commanded to give her meat. The daughter of Jairus was resurrected. Jesus said that she was sleeping, but all of them scorned uh, be, uh, uh, laughed him to scorn because they knew that she was dead. And when Jesus said, Maid, arise, or as in other versions says, Talita kumi, come up, maid, it says, her spirit came again to her. What does it mean? Yeah. That she became she be, uh, began to breathe, and she stood up, and Jesus commanded to feed her. Another resurrection, John chapter 11. Oh, um, before that, Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 15. Luke 7, 11 to 15. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him, and much people. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. 
and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up, and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. This widow had one only son. He died. Yehua was taken to be buried. And Jesus performed a miracle, resurrecting him. Another important resurrection is in John chapter 11. We could read the whole chapter, but it is too long, and it's a very interesting story about this man at whom Jesus loved, Lazarus. Let's read only from verse 41 to 44. John 11, 41 to 44. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he, has, he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. This miracle was greater than the ones before. You know why? Because Lazarus was already four days uh, dead, and his flesh was already in a state of decomposition. And even Martha said, Lord, he stinks already. No one of the Jews could accuse Jesus that he was only in a state of coma. And Jesus performed a great miracle. He cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he performed this miracle in the presence of the unbelieving Jews. And many of the Sadducees who did not believe in resurrection were there present too. And they could not deny this fact. And for that reason, they sought to kill not only Jesus, but also Lazarus, so that this miracle should not be spread any further. And the great and important resurrection was the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He died, he was buried, but his flesh should not see corruption. He died Friday afternoon, and Sunday morning he already raised from the dead. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, we read, But uh, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again, the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus resurrected, not after 72 hours being dead, 
not after three days, but on the third day, according to the scriptures and according to Jesus' words. He always said, on the third day, I will rise again. In the church of Corinth, there was a great controversy over the state of the dead, especially among the Sadducees. And many of them, they denied the resurrection. And in the same book, same chapter, 1 Corinthians 15, let us read from verse 13 to 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 13 to 18. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Here the Apostle Paul are reasoning with the Corinthians. said, if there is no resurrection, then Christ did not raise. Then we are preaching lies. We are preaching untruth because we preach that God resurrected Jesus. And if Christ did not rise from the dead, then you remain in your sins. Our preaching is in vain. Your faith is in vain. And all those that died in Christ, they are all perished if there is no resurrection. After the resurrection of Jesus, there was, I, I want to mention one more resurrection in the New Testament. You remember the resurrection of <coughs> Dorcas, Tabitha. When Peter went to Joppa and uh, all the women showed Peter what benefit they received from Dorcas and then Peter, he um, went into the chamber, chamber and he asked all to leave the room where Dorcas was laying dead. He kneeled down and prayed and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. In Acts 9, verse 37 to 40, this is recorded. There was one resurrection performed after the resurrection of Jesus. But we do not have, since the beginning of the Christian era, a record of other resurrections, especially during the um, um, Dark Ages and even after in the time of Reformation, we do not have a record of resurrections. At least I did not find anything recorded. But 
there is a promise that there will be resurrections. There will be three different resurrections in the future. One of these resurrections is recorded in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Daniel 12, 2. And it reads, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Interesting that Jesus said, All that are in the graves, they shall come forth, some to everlasting life, some to everlasting condemnation. The Bible verses that we have read before prayer. Jesus said, all will come out. But here in Daniel 12, 2, it says that many of them will resurrect. And this is a mixed resurrection. Some of righteous and some of unrighteous are wicked. Now when will this take place? To know it, we should read verse 1. And verse 1 says that at that time there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since even to that same time. In the time of trouble, this resurrection to, will take place. And this resurrection is, as I, as I mentioned, mixed, righteous and wicked. This is not the resurrection of all righteous, neither the resurrection of all wicked. But part of them are righteous, part of them are wicked. Let us see specifically when, in a time of trouble, this will take place. And I read in Great Controversy, page 636 and 637. In the midst of the angry heavens is one clear space of indescribable glory whence comes the voice of God like the sound of many waters saying, it is done. Revelation 16, 17. What does it say there in Revelation 16, 17? Let us read Revelation 16, 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of God from the throne saying, it is done. And let's read verse 18 also. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so might an earthquake and so great. In Great Controversy, commenting this event, we read that the voice of God comes through a little space open in heaven, and that voice, like the sound of many waters, says, it is done. That voice shakes the heavens and the earth. There is a mighty earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. <coughs> Notice that in the beginning of the seventh or last plague, this resurrection will take place in the time of trouble, but precisely in the beginning of the seventh plague. <coughs> and when that earthquake shakes the heaven and earth, I read in continuation. 
uh, graves are opened, and many of them that s sleep in dust, in the dust of the earth, awake some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 12:2. And the commentary of the Spirit of Prophecy follows: All who have died in the faith of the third angel's message come forth from the tomb glorified to hear God's covenant of peace with those who have kept His law. So those that go to everlasting life, resurrected, in the resurrection of Daniel 12, 2, are all those who died in the faith of the third angel's message. And of course, we know that that happened since 1844, when the third angel began to proclaim his message. What about those that go to everlasting contempt? Who are they? They also which pierced him, Revelation 1, 7. Those that mocked and derided Christ's dying agonies and the most violent opposers of his truth and his people are raised to behold him in his glory and to see the honor placed upon the loyal and obedient. So those that will go to everlasting damnation or everlasting death are those that pierced him. They have to be resurrected before his coming. Because Revelation 1, 7 says, every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him. <clears throat> so they will be resurrected before the coming of Jesus. And this resurrection, which occurs in the beginning of the seventh plague, is called a partial resurrection. Because par partially, are, part of them are... Uh, righteous, and part of them are wicked. But not only those that pierced Jesus, those that were greatest enemies of God and of His people, they are also raised to see Jesus coming. After that resurrection on earth, something very important will happen. In Great Controversy 639, I am not going to read, just mention, you can take note and read. Great Controversy 639 says that in heaven appears two tables of stone opened. A hand opened two tables of stone, and that very law that was given in Sinai will be displayed in the presence of all inhabitants of the earth. And now, all of them, they have a new concept of their duty, but it's too late. It specifically, it's too late to re realize that the seventh-day Sabbath is the seal of the living God. And the enemies, they are overwhelmed. This, after this, the voice of God announces the day and hour of Jesus' coming. Then the righteous, they know already the day and the hour of Jesus' coming. And when Jesus comes, He comes, as it is described by uh, the Apostle Paul, 1 Thessalonians, Chapter 4, 15 to 17. First Thessalonians 4, 15 to 17. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Paul says here that there will be a resurrection. All those that died in Christ, they will be resurrected. And then he said, and then we together shall meet the Lord in the air. However, there is a little detail that he did not mention to the Thessalonians, but he mentioned to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let us read verse 51 to 53. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. Before the saints unite, those that are resurrected immortal, incorruptible, and before they join and go to meet the Lord in the air, the living will be changed from mortal to immortal, from corruptible to incorruptible. And then they shall go up to meet the Lord in the air. This resurrection that takes place at the coming of Jesus is called the first general resurrection of all righteous. Notice in uh, the Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Notice that in this resurrection at the coming of Jesus, in this first resurrection, all of them are blessed and holy. There will be no wicked resurrected at the coming of Jesus. And this is explained in verse 5, Revelation 20, verse 5. It says, But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So the wicked will not be resurrected until after the 1,000 years. And after the 1,000 years, there will be a resurrection of all wicked. And uh, you can read in Revelation 20, verse 12 to 15, that these wicked will come from the sea, from the earth, from wherever they were buried. They will come up. And then it says that this, in verse, uh, verse 14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. They will be resurrected to receive their reward. And after that, they are deceived by the enemy, by Satan, to go and take over the holy city. The holy city had descended from heaven. But the doors are closed. And uh, the Bible informs us that fire will come down from heaven, go up from the earth, and will destroy all the wicked. 
will destroy Satan, his angels, and all wicked men. In Malachi chapter 4, it says that there will be left no root and no branch. And what will happen to the wicked after they are destroyed? They will become ashes under the sole of the feet of the saints. They will be annihilated. There would be no life. In Great Controversy 637, I wish to read a statement. The wicked receive their recompense in the earth. They shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. Some are destroyed as in a moment, while others suffer many days. All are punished according to their deeds. The sins of the righteous having been transferred to Satan, he is made to suffer not only for his own rebellion, but for all the sins which he has caused God's people to commit. His punishment is to be far greater than that of those whom he has deceived. After all have perished, who fell by his deception, he is still to live and suffer on. In the cleansing flame, flames, the wicked are at last destroyed. Root and branches, Satan the root, his followers the branches. The full penalty of the law has been visited. The demands of justice have been met. And heaven and earth beholding declare the righteousness of Jehovah. The end of sin, the end of evil, and sin will rise up no more in the earth made new. When we go to a funeral and we see uh, a burial service, we should remember that there will be a resurrection. All will be resurrected at different occasions. But all will receive the reward. And those that have done the will of God, those who surrender their lives to Jesus Christ, confess their sins, their sins were blotted out and placed upon the originator of sin. And now they are eternally saved, enjoying immortality that they received from the life giver. What a blessed day will be there when all the saints, they meet together, and that day is not far distant. We can look forward, and by faith we can see it approaching, when all will uh, be in the presence of the Lord, either for eternal life or eternal death. May the Lord be merciful to us, and help us that we all may be among those that will inherit eternal life, immortality, incorruption. This is my wish and prayer. Amen. Amen. Our gracious, merciful Heavenly Father, we come before thy throne of grace in the precious name of Jesus. With thankful hearts, because thou hast loved us, we thank thee for thy mercy, Thy watch care over us. We thank Thee for the plan of salvation for Jesus our Lord. And especially we thank Thee because Thou hast promised to give eternal life to all those that accept Him as His personal Savior. We thank Thee also because we have the promise that at uh, death, which is simply a sleep, uh, 
is not the end of everything, but there will be a resurrection and everyone of us will receive the reward that we have done. Help us, Lord, that we may do thy will and submit our will to thine. And in that great day, we may be counted among those who shall be clothed with immortality and reign forever and ever with Jesus. We ask thee to accept our worship and bless us in the remaining hours of the Sabbath day. Forgive us our sins, mistaken shortcomings, and bless also thy people everywhere in the world, those who seek thee in spirit and truth. Be with us in the remaining hours that we may be able to keep the Sabbath holy according to the commandment. Put thy peace in our hearts, give us thy grace, and dismiss us with the Sabbath blessings. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.